But can technology make a side impact survivable at higher speeds? That's what we've set up our test to investigate. The Shogun's going to be driving along this line from there at 60 miles an hour. The Civic's going to be tootling along at 30 miles an hour from that direction. At this point where I'm standing, the Shogun's going to slam into the side of the Civic. Just the sort of crash that could happen at any A-road junction. The Civic has been completely wrecked. Where the driver's side doors used to be, there's just a gaping hole. I inspected the remains with vehicle safety expert Roy Quinney. I mean, do you think there's any chance anyone would have survived in this? It's highly unlikely. I mean, as you can see from the intrusion of this, here we have here, this is the driver's door over here, and that's the handle release there. But as you can see through here, there's, that's the leg of the dummy. But if you open this front door here, you'll probably see the remains of the, the leg of the driver still in the uh, passenger area down here. So it actually come off? There it's detached, yes. It's a massive compatibility problem. The soft side of the car collapses when the stiff front of the 4x4 hits it. The 4x4, on the other hand, scarcely crumples at all, driving almost clean through the car's bodywork. From overhead, you can just make out the off-roader's bonnet practically touching the far side of the car's passenger space. Despite the 60 mile an hour impact, the 4x4's front sustains very little damage. The bumper and bonnet were deformed by a few inches, but underneath, the chassis rails were virtually undamaged. The compatibility problem is made even worse by the height at which the 4x4 hits the car. Another car of the same size would have impacted our car lower, making contact nearer our car's sill line where it meets the B-pillar, a point of strength that would have offered some resistance. But the height of the 4x4 means it hits halfway up the door, where the car's much weaker. The 4x4 survives the initial impact relatively unscathed and is still traveling at 45 miles an hour but its high center of gravity makes it prone to rolling over and when its axle catches on the wreckage of the car that's exactly what it does so what would have happened to the people inside it well on the basis of maintaining its integrity i maintained its shape this is a good for the ocran because you maintain the distance between the head and the roof now obviously there's minimal restraints on this vehicle so it's only the belts have held him in so the passenger's done really well although his foot is trying to hold the door open there now uh, the downside is because there's no inflatable restraints the arms have uh, come out the window for the driver and in reality he probably would have bled to death mm. so curtain airbags would have helped here just to keep your flailing arms inside the cabin but they wouldn't have helped anyone in the other car at these speeds our Honda was over 10 years old, and newer cars now have much tougher side structures, but they still wouldn't cope with a crash of this severity. This is one compatibility problem that technology isn't yet up to solving.